Hello, I'm Omri Karen Lapidot. Welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. And today we'll start a set of very straightforward videos regarding the use of full frame lenses, 35mm lenses, on the Fuji GFX with a sensor of 44 by 33 millimeters, which is quite larger than the 24 by 36 millimeter sensor in uh, full frame uh, cameras. First of all, I'd like to apologize for my English. English is my second language, and I'll try my best to make the video as understandable as uh, possible. But I think this kind of information is quite scarce around the internet. I had a hard time finding um, any info about uh, those lenses on uh, this kind of camera. So I want this uh, video to help as many people as possible, and English is the lingua franca of the world, so it is uh, what it is. In the first video, we'll lay some uh, ground rules or uh, rule of thumbs about the use of 35mm uh, lenses on a medium format uh, sensor. And then we're gonna pass to uh, the lenses that I own through some basic uh, testings. We'll of course check the uh, vignette, we'll check the sharpness, and uh, we have some images uh, that you can watch in the end of every video. So let's start by some rule of thumbs. There are three main options for adapting 35 millimeter lenses on the GFX. One is the fully electronic adapter, such as the uh, Fringer EF GFX Pro that I use. It's an excellent adapter, it has the aperture ring, it uh, controls the AF, and of course, every electronics in the camera it gives back EXIF uh, information and whatnot. In my opinion, this is probably the best way to go if you want the camera to be as close to what you remember from any 35 millimeter system or the uh, GFX system, it gives the closest experience, though we must uh, put into consideration the AF speed will not be even close to what you'll get on Canon or Sony and won't be as fast as a uh, GF uh, lens. The other option is a semi-electronic adapter which will uh, bring back EXIF uh, data and will help the uh, IBs and uh, will control uh, electronic apertures. I think uh, Fringer has one for Nikon lenses, probably won't work with every Nikon lenses because a uh, Nikon system is kind of patchy and not as consistent as the EF uh, system, but it will work. You'll still have to focus manually, which is not the easiest task on the GFX, but it's, it's doable. It's something you can um, actually achieve. And the um, third option is the fully mechanical, stupid, dumb adapter, uh, which will work with uh, Leica M lenses and with every other uh, medium format or 35 millimeter um, lens mount available. That means no EXIF data and of course no, no autofocus because the lenses are incapable of it. But those are the main three options. The lenses we won't be able to adapt are uh, mirrorless electronic lenses because we don't have enough flange distance in order to adapt them. So uh, no Sony E mounts, no Canon RF mounts, uh, etc., etc. It is rather hard to anticipate the performance of each lens on the camera because we don't have any information uh, about it, not official uh, at least. So we're gonna have to check the web and try and find some examples and we'll have hard time to figure out which one are cropped and which one uh, have been modified in uh, that way or another. So there's no one way of telling which lens uh, will cover the sensor and to what extent will it uh, cover. I hope the next videos will help, but there are some uh, clues that might help us. So first of all, Prime lenses generally gives better coverage than zoom lenses. I don't know why it happens, but in my experience, in my short and very limited experience, most zoom lenses won't cover uh, the entire sensor. Of course, there are uh, some exceptions to that rule. Also, medium teles and uh, tele lenses will have better chance of cover the entire sensor. Uh, we'll see some examples in the next uh, videos, but. 85 f1.8 by Canon or the uh, 135 millimeters f2 will cover most of the sensor and I suspect most other medium tele and tele lenses will do something quite similar. Normal lenses such as 50, 45 uh, millimeter lenses will cover most of the sensor and that depends on the specific aperture that we'll shoot in and the focus distance because the furthest away the lens will focus will have more vignette because the uh, lens elements are closer 
to the sensor and the closer will focus, the lens element will move further away from the sensor and then will cover slightly more uh, area of the sensor. Macro lenses will generally work fine at the largest enlargement in the closest uh, focus ranges probably won't cover as good as they would on a 35mm uh, lenses and won't cover as good as uh, medium format macro lenses but they're doing a decent job and each one of those lenses will cover the sensor better if we're working in some sort of a close-up. Now the aperture is quite tricky. As much as we'll close the aperture, we'll have less pronounced vignette. Um, the area which is darkened by the vignette will be uh, smaller but the corner that are darkened by the vignette won't be recoverable. If we'll use something like the uh, 50 f1.4, we'll have pretty heavy vignette even on full frame cameras, but the vignette is a bit fadier, so it will be easier or more possible to recover most of the information in uh, Lightroom using lens profiles and uh, using some editing of our own. If we shoot at f8 or f11, more landscape-ish uh, apertures, we'll have the tiniest dark corners, but those dark corners will probably be extremely dark. So we won't have any chance of recovering them, but with a slight crop of a uh, five to four or a uh, six by six, we'll get rid of them completely. Ah, and also the panoramic expand uh, mode will get rid of most vignette in most lenses. One thing that's important to mention is that Fuji GF lenses are excellent and none of those lenses will ever achieve the performance of a Fuji uh, GF original lens. They are built for this kind of uh, sensor, they work much better with the uh, IBS, they work much better with the entirety of the sensor. They're sharp at every aperture, at every focal length, and they're extremely technical lenses. That said, Fuji haven't gave us any character lenses. We like to call it character, although it's mostly flawed lenses, but flawed lenses will sometimes give us something that is really hard to recover from a technical lens, some nostalgic sense, and photography is about nostalgics. So I think using 35mm lenses on the GFX will cover an entirely different field than uh, the one covered by uh, Fuji's GF lenses, but I will recommend having at least one uh, Fuji GF lens. I have the 50 f3.5, it's an excellent landscape and travel lens. It gives the best technical performance, extremely sharp, will do everything that I want in regard to uh, landscape, and it's extremely light and portable and robust, so it will withstand the elements and that's something I won't be completely uh, comfortable with saying about those lenses and the adapter that's between the lens and the camera.